Welcome, I'm Darren, and today we're going to build our first Power Apps application using something as simple as an Excel spreadsheet, a gallery, and a form. Let's dig in. From the top here, I clicked on New App. I'll just give it a name here, and you'll see something exactly like this. All right, so the first thing that you want to start doing is you want to connect to the data, or at least be thinking about your data. So right here, I have an Excel spreadsheet called Customers. And in it, I've got uh, last name, first name, company, business phone, home phone, and email address, and that's it. Now, of course, these last two columns are blank. So if you already have some Excel data, uh, let me tell you what you need to do with this Excel data in order for it to be uh, pulled in as a data source within Power Apps. You just have columns and rows of information here. And what you wanna make sure is that it is formatted as a table within Excel. So for example, this is all my data here. You wanna select the very first row and drag across, get all the data. So this might be hundreds of rows or thousands of rows, but you wanna select all the data and you wanna go up to the top within Excel, format as table, and pick up whatever format. It really doesn't matter what format, what, what colors, what styling that you pick. You just need to pick something. That's really it. So after you have everything formatted as a table, you wanna go ahead and save, close. And the thing about uh, ex using Excel as a data source, it can't be open in Excel while you're trying to connect to it. In fact, it connects to it from OneDrive. So let's do that now. We'll go over to the data sources. So if you open up this little um, window here on the side, you go into data and you'll see all the, the data. So yours is probably gonna be blank here. It's not gonna have anything. You wanna click on the add data and we're looking for uh, Excel over here on the connectors. So if you open that, if you don't see Excel right away, you just go up here to the top and you type in Excel and you're gonna see uh, Excel online for business. And that's what I recommend using, this one right here. And then I'm already signed in to my Office 365 environment. So I'll click that connection. All right, so I'm gonna click OneDrive for business. And um, after I select that, OneDrive, sure. So pretty much what you're doing is you're traversing the different levels of your um, the file system within your OneDrive. So it's probably going to be in a folder. It might be in the root of your OneDrive. It may not. It just depends on how you organized your files within your OneDrive. All right, so I'm going to go into this Excel data folder. So it happens to be my uh, customer spreadsheet is in that folder. So I'm going to select that one, and it's going to load. It's going to look inside that Excel spreadsheet and look for tables. Remember, we had to have those things formatted as tables, so that's the reason why it looks for those tables. Otherwise, you're not going to get anything. It's going to like, I don't know how to deal with this. So we're gonna click connect now. You see that we have two options, either insert an auto-generated ID into the Excel table, uh, which I like. Uh, otherwise, you need to point it to a column that is definitely unique within that. So I'm just gonna leave this first default option and I'm gonna click connect. All right, so we do have our Excel data source right here. It's called table one. Now, whenever you create that table within Excel, you do have the option within Excel to actually name that table, which I recommend. I would have named it something like customers, but uh, the fact that we have it as table one is no big deal. We just need to remember if we're gonna reference that data, it's gonna be this table one, which is our customers. All right, so now to the fun part within Power Apps. You can actually start dropping some controls over and start working with the data. So the first thing I recommend doing is dropping a gallery. And I always use this blank vertical. Sometimes I'll use a horizontal if I'm doing some type of tabs across the top of the application, but most of the time you want a blank vertical. So I'll drop that in here. And uh, the first thing that you wanna do is point it to the data source. So we got this table one, so we'll do that. And it's gonna connect to it. And uh, what you'll notice here is it really didn't change very much. So what it wants you to do is add an item uh, so a gallery is a, a repeater control. So whatever you put in the very first record here, so for example, I'm gonna click on add an item from the insert pane, I'm gonna click on that, and it's gonna bring this, uh, all these different controls we can drop over. I recommend always dropping a label over first, and uh, so we'll bring that over. So whatever we put in this first record, um, it's gonna repeat it over and over for all the rows that you give it. So. One of the first things I do with the gallery is I click on the gallery itself. If you click up here, you're actually selecting the first row, the first record within the gallery. So if you see a second row here, you wanna click on it. And uh, I highly recommend giving this a border. So down here in the border, uh, on the right side of the screen here, I'm gonna give it a border of two. Okay, so now we can see where that gallery starts, where the boundaries of the gallery are. 
So where it starts, where it ends. Okay. So again, that was border. Make sure it actually has either a solid dotted or dashed, not this none. Don't pick the none. Otherwise you won't be able to see it. Make sure it's one or two or some other number. That's the pixels wide the border will be. I like two in this case, and it really doesn't matter the color as long as it has a little bit of a contrast against white. Okay. So now we can actually see where the gallery starts and ends. So before uh, we didn't know, know exactly where that was at. So this sort of helps with that uh, to begin with. So the next thing I do is I just sort of make this first row a little bit more uh, not so tall there. All right. And we can also make this gallery. We can actually um, size it a little bit, make it take up a little more of the screen. All right. So we dropped over this this label uh, on that first row and it connected to business phone, which is maybe not the first thing that we want to do. Maybe we want to focus on. Um, so the first we're inside of Power Apps, you've got this thing called this item. So this item dot, and I know we've got a first name. So I'll start typing first name. And as I type the F, I get a little drop down there. Uh, in programming environments, uh, a lot of times we call this IntelliSense, especially like Visual Studio, Microsoft type of environments. We call this IntelliSense. So if I ever say IntelliSense, that's what I'm talking about. So as I see this, I see there's one item, whatever item is on the top. If that's the one you want, you just hit tab on your keyboard and it's just going to type it all for you. Okay. So there's the person's first name. And then what I like to do within the galleries, I have that label selected. I can move it around. I'm going to hit control C, control V. And that's going to give me another one. And it just gives me another first name. Okay. But we want to move this and uh, beside that one and up here in the expression bar, instead of first name, let's give this a last name. To type last name and I see it there, hit tab. There we go. There's the first name and last name. Okay. So if you wanted their name to run all together, this is what you would need to do. Make that label, the first label a little bigger. Okay. And inside that label, um, we had the first name. And if we want to concatenate, use the ampersand to concatenate or to add on more, more text, more strings. We, we will give it a, a, a double quote, space, double quote. So that adds on a space. Then we'll do another ampersand. We're going to splice in some more text here. So we're going to reference this item. Again, this item references the current record, the current row within this gallery. This item dot last name. Hit tab. So now we have first name and last name all together there. I mean, you could do last name and inside this little space, you could put in a comma, then a space. You could do that. That's what you'd like to do. So now that we have their full name being displayed, we could go over here and have something like, let's see, let's hit dot here for the this item and see all the different fields we have. So we have business phone, company, email address. Let's use company. Okay. So you could have company there. All right. All right, so we've got the gallery there working. So the next thing we want to do is add over a form. So a form within Power Apps allows us to modify the data. It's a data entry uh, form within Power Apps. And uh, so let's do that now. We'll go over to insert forms. And almost always we want to use an edit. The edit is more flexible. You can use a form to just display information. So it's just better just to select the edit form all the time. Bring that over. We'll size it up. You'll see that Power App sort of helps us as we're making it uh, so tall. It lines it up with a gallery. Okay. I also like to give forms little borders like I did with the gallery. So I will go over to border and make sure we've got a two there. So we know where it uh, begins and ends. And the first thing a form wants to do is connect to the data. So we'll do something very similar to what we did with the gallery and we will tell it what data source to use. So over here on data source, we'll go ahead and select table one, which is our customers. And it's telling me that there are no fields in the form. Okay, so it says, choose the fields you want to add from the customization pane. So this is the customization pane over here. You'll see it's got fields. We can click on edit fields and let's add all the fields that we want. So why not add them all? So we've got first name, we got last name, we have the company, business phone, email address, so we're going to select everything there. I'll just selecting it in the order that I wanted to see it. There's no guarantee it's going to do that. Add it in the order that you wanted. 
but um, it looks like it, it may have, which is good. So I'm going to click off that so I can show you. So it doesn't provide a lot of um, space here for the user to enter information. So I'm going to change those columns to one. So it's going to be one column of fields. So there we got first name, last name, company, business phone, email address, and home phone. Okay. So what's the difference between these two? So we could display columns over here, and obviously we're displaying columns or fields over here. So a form allows you to, to edit, to view or edit, um, all, the, all the values within a single record. Now a gallery allows you to view many records at once. So this is gonna be a listing. They're gonna select one of these records over here in the gallery. And then we want to display that record over here on the right inside the form. So there are a few things that you need to know about the form. Okay. So we know how to connect to a data source, you know how to bring, add in the fields that we want. And um, if you want them to be in different order, you can drag these things around. Okay. Um, the next thing that we need to do is take a look at the default mode. The default mode here is if uh, it's going to, it's going to be edit as the default. If you only want to view all the values, you can select view. Usually you're gonna have either an edit or a view. So if this screen is only to be used for adding new records, I would recommend, of course, gotta select that, that form again. So if I go over here to the tree view, you see it says tree view, all these, those three little layers there. This is called the tree view. You can see all the things that are on your, on your form and actually select on, on the form and then you'll get all the, the properties on the right side for the form. So if you ever have a hard time selecting the form, you try to click on it and it selects a data card. These are things are called data cards. So you can click on the border of the form and you can get it. Other, otherwise, you go over to the tree view and select it, this form one over there. Okay, so I want to go back over here and we'll look at this default mode. So many times you'll probably want edit unless it's only used for adding new records. Okay, so we're going to leave this as edit. So now, how does it know what record to edit? So what we'll do here is this form will reference the gallery. So let's click on the gallery. What's the gallery's name? You look up here in the upper right, it says gallery once. So if you click on that, it, it uh, changed this so that you can actually rename it. Um, typically I like to call galleries meaningful names and I like to prefix all my controls with something that um, sort of denotes what it is. So for a gallery, I might call it GAL for gallery customers. Okay. And um, I'll go over to this form here, make sure it's selected. We'll go over to advanced and you see the data source. There is a, a data section over here in advanced. It's, there's the uh, table one, that's our customers. There's an item. Okay, so an item, instead of typing in here, I always like to type up here in this expression bar at the top. Let's actually click on the word item. Okay, and you see the, the uh, cursor is up here. So I'm gonna reference that gallery. G-A-L, and all your galleries, if you name all your galleries this way, they'll be right here at the top. You select the gallery, and I'll hit dot, selected. Okay, so that is the row that has been selected by the user. Um, now, there, there was always a row that's selected with the gallery. So if they load up this screen and they haven't clicked on anything, by default, the first row is going to be selected. So we'll say the gallery dot selected, and that's what it's going to use. So if you look at that form now, it actually has all the, the data values. So obviously, this first record is selected. Elizabeth Anderson, Elizabeth Anderson, company H, company H. And it's showing uh, this business phone and she has no data for email address and phone. In fact, I think most if not all these records don't have anything for email address or the home phone. If you remember when we imported our Excel spreadsheet, and that's no problem. We can actually enter it in using our application and actually testing it out, okay? So let's run this. Now, you have, we haven't really talked about this, but within Power Apps, as you're designing, if you actually wanna run your application, you just hit F5 on your keyboard. Okay, there's a button for that, which is this little play button here in the upper right corner, so a five. And if I click on different records, I just clicked on uh, Thomas Axon. So he's displayed there. So if you click around, it's going to change it. So the next thing we might want to do is provide a save button. So let's say we go in here and run this and we start to add in an email address. Oh. 
What's to save this back to the database? So we need to add something in here that will actually do that. So we're going to add a button and let's move it down here, right off here to the side. And uh, on the properties, um, we actually might want to call this BTN, which is a prefix for perhaps all your buttons. That's what I do. Button save. There we go. And then the text is what's being displayed on the button. So I'll say save. There we go. So now we have for a button, we have this thing called on select. It's already selected, but just in case it's not, you just go here and find on select. There's a shortcut to it that I use a lot of times when it doesn't automatically have the on select there. I go to action and then click on on select and it's right here. Two ways to do the same thing. So in this case, what we're going to do is we are going to say submit form. And I just typed in SUB and it's as of the very top. So I'm going to hit tab, substitute form. And the name of our form happens to be form one. I'm going to hit tab, ending parenthesis. Now, typically I actually like to name our, my form with good naming. So instead of form, I'd say FRM customer because we're modifying one customer at a time. Hit enter. Now, if I go back to my button, you notice up here it says form customer. So what's great about Power Apps, if you rename something, it's going to change it everywhere else that references it. That's very nice. <laughs> so we're going to have submit form there. Um, so let's let's test it out. Let's actually go up here to uh, Elizabeth Anderson and let's change Elizabeth to just call her Beth. And we click on save. Going to say submit form. You see how the button is grayed out just for a moment and it came back. So look over here in the gallery, Beth Anderson. So Power Apps is smart enough to know when the underlying data source has been changed uh, within this current Power App session and it will actually refresh it everywhere else is it's referenced. So you could have something that's referencing that Beth Anderson record somewhere else on the screen or some other screen and it will automatically update it. It's very nice. So, all right, so we have the list of our records here within our spreadsheet. We can modify the data on all the fields. We can save it back. What about adding a new record? Okay, so to add a new record, let's add a new button. So we'll go to insert, find a button. We'll drag it down here right beside the save. So if we want to say add new, and we we'll probably want to capitalize the in and new. There we go. And um, there's a function that we can use here for the on select. Instead of saying submit form, we're going to say new form. There we go. And there's our form customer, our, our uh, form that handles that customer. So it's going to say new, and it's going to blank out all those fields and allow us to type in new values. And then um, after that, they can just click on save and it will save it. So let's try that out. Click on new, blanks it out. And I'm going to type in uh, John Smith company. Let's say he works at Microsoft. His business phone is 8675309. Of course, with no area code, right? And we've got John and he has smith.name. His home phone number is um, 407-555-1234. Let's hit save. There we go. So now we should see at the very bottom, John Smith. All right. Well, what else possibly could we do with our application? We uh, can view. We can... Uh, view a record we can edit a record uh what about deleting a record okay let's let's do that so let's uh go up to the well let's run it and you can use a scroll bar here there's a shortcut to actually putting your application into a run mode it's a tip that always pops up when you first start with power apps it pretty much tells you if you hold down alt on your keyboard you can actually sort of put it in run mode and click around and do things that's what i, I was doing at first but I wanted to explain that to you. So um, we're here at the top. So I'm going to go back to design mode and we could add in a little button here. Let's just, um, yeah, let's just add a button. 
And instead of it being a blue, let's put in a maroon color and we'll call this delete. And uh, maybe make it a little smaller, not so big and in your face. There we go. I'm trying to <laughs> trying to center it. There we go. And I also don't want it too close to the right side because the right side is where PowerUps likes to put little uh, scroll bars. So uh, for the click event, uh, I'm sorry, on the on select event. So instead of just selecting the parent. Um, what we want to do is you can separate expressions within Power Apps with a semicolon. So I'm going to put a semicolon before I put any other expressions or code. And I'm going to call a function called remove. Remove. Very good. And the first parameter that remove wants to know is what's the data source? So you already know it's table one, right? As we go over here to the left side, we've got our data sources and it's called table one, which is the name, uh, the default name that Excel gives you if you create a table. So we're going to reference table one. And then the second item is the record that we want to remove for that data source. Now you already know, I've already mentioned it several times to reference the current, the currently selected record in a gallery is referenced by a keyword called this item. Okay, so we'll pass that in there and then we'll put a ending parenthesis there. And I always like to follow up expressions in the expression bar with a semicolon, just in case I want to add some code later on. All right. And so that should, uh, that should work that way. So let's run this. Let's go down and find that last record that we had this John Smith and we could just click on delete and it should, it should delete this. So John Smith, we click on it. It takes a moment and he's gone. All right. So now no item to display. So what was what was selected a moment ago was that John Smith. He's no longer there. So it's saying no item to display. If we select some other record over here in the gallery, it's going to bring up that form and bring up those values. So we're good there. So something else I'd like to show you guys. If um, you see this delete button, it's a little overwhelming when I look at this screen. If you only want to look at that button, um, for the currently selected row and you're only going to be whenever you click on this button it's going to select that row anyway what i like to do is you can actually set up an expression for the visible property for a button so i've got this button selected instead of on select i'm going to scroll down to the very bottom everything's in alphabetical order i'm going to click on visible and there's something special i can do here i can say and i can give it either a true or false value or an expression that evaluates to a true or false so what I want this button to do is only be visible if that particular row is selected. So I'm going to say this item, the current row, dot is selected. Okay. Let's run this. So now there's also an indication of what record is selected too. So um, it's a little less overwhelming, right? So let me show you some of my the things that I like to do in my applications to make things look a little bit more uh, professional looking. So um, for the gallery, there is another property I like to modify. And that property is called, if I scroll down to the very bottom, uh, if the scroll bar is all the way to here, it's called template fill. That's how I find it. I just scroll to the very bottom and look at template fill, the, the, very, the very first item there. And as probably time goes on in a few years, maybe uh, Microsoft will have put in a few more things in here. So it may not be exactly right there, but everything's in alphabetical order. So I'm going to click on template fill. And this is an RGB type of color. So um, so right here, if, if you select it, obviously the background color. So this template fill, the template is, is talking about the rows, the individual rows here. So this is a white color. So instead of white, I actually like to do a little uh, expression where I say, if it's selected, make it a light yellow. If it's not selected, make it white. Okay. So in order to do that, we have a function called if. We'll say if, and it takes three parameters. The first parameter is uh, sort of like what we just dealt with a few minutes ago or a few moments ago with the button uh, where the we need to pass it a true or false value or something that evaluates to a true or false value. So here we're going to uh, do what we did with that button, which is this item dot is selected. If it is selected, let's use light yellow. Now these color names within Power Apps are 
web defined, you know, so if you, if you use HTML, CSS, these are web colors. So these are very well-known, uh, established standardized, uh, color names. So light yellow. Um, so if it is selected, it's going to make it light yellow. If it's not selected, then we're just going to make it white. Okay. So this, this if statement is actually a function. Now we've used several functions like submit form, new form. Um, this is yet another function if, Okay, so if it is true, it's going to be like yellow. Otherwise, it's going to be false. Now, if you look at this, look, this item must be selected because it's yellow and it's got that button select uh, that button uh, uh, visible. Okay, so if you click on another one, so it makes it look a little nicer. I'm not quite there yet. So once you've set up that template fill, then what I like to do is go over to this color for the gallery. That color is actually going to be the um, the, the the fill or the background, okay? So now we have a nice little gray color. I like to go a little bit lighter than that though. So let's pick a little lighter color. There we go. And again, we have the whole gallery selected, okay? So if you don't see what I what I have shown here, um, you probably don't have the gallery. Selected. So if you click on the first row, you're gonna get something else. So make sure you click on the middle of the gallery, make sure the gallery is selected. Now over here, what I like to do is you'll notice there's a wrap count, uh, template size, uh, template padding. Template padding, I always like to set to either one or a two, depending upon how thin you like those divider lines. Okay, so I'm gonna make it a one. That looks nice. Sometimes two is a little better. There we go. So now, as you look at this, as you click around, uh, for me, yeah, that looks a, a, a little better than what we had before, okay? Okay, so something else I'd like to show you is okay with the gallery, we've got the form, but it's just here on this blank screen. If we, we took the gallery and the form, it would be, be blank. Well, chances are you probably have a, some type of application header at the top, maybe a menu system, or you eventually will. So let me show you. So if you built this on a blank screen like I just did here, and you want to bring it over somewhere else, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the screen. If you look at the left side of the screen, we've got the tree view. And I'm going to click on the screen that it's on. Right now it's sitting on screen one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit control A on my keyboard, which does a select all. And then I'm going to hit, um, you know, we just hit control C. We'll just copy it. We'll leave a copy here. And we can go over to a screen um, in our application that we want to paste it in. Okay. So I like this purple color. It, it sort of signifies the, the colors within Power Apps. So um, what I want to do here on this home screen is I just want to paste and it should bring all those controls over. There we go. All right, something else I wanna do for this form is that we have a, a nice back color for this gallery, which is, um, well, it's actually uh, this gray. But for the form, we'll actually make this to be white. I think for right now, it's some type of a transparent color. Let's click on white. There we go. And let's just sort of fit all this into this, uh, this existing application that I use for my application template. So let's move this down a little bit and it starts to look like a more uh, finished application. Okay, so this form um, doesn't have to take up the whole screen. It could be something like this. We can make it a little shorter and just have these two buttons have their own little space down here. Okay. All right. While you're working in Power Apps, I highly recommend you hit Control S to actually save your project. Um, when you first create a project, you want to make sure you actually give it a name and save it. Power Apps will automatically do a save. I believe it's every two minutes, but if you never do that initial save, it's never going to start doing that. So, um, and also within Power Apps, uh, there's a version history, so you can roll back to a specific version. Um, but if you don't have a lot of saves in there, you can't roll back to a specific time. So if you mess something up and you roll back to, let's say, exactly 10 minutes ago, uh, if you've done a lot of saves, you're going to have a lot of points that you can restore to. So it's always a good idea to every once in a while you do something, you, you finish a, a portion, hit, <laughs> uh, hit that control S and you're going to have that little restore point. It's great. All right. So let's try to make this look a little better. We've got some leftover blue color. Well, Within Power Apps on the home the home tab here at the top, you see the 
the menu item I selected was home. There's a little theme thing here and you can actually pick a, a purple theme. Uh, let's go down here to office and let's pick purple. Let's see how it matches with the current purple theme that I have, um, which can be helpful. Okay. So now that I've cl clicked purple, it gives me purple buttons and the other colors it brings in is more like a, a gray color and it coincides with the theme that I have. All right. And there's our app. If you found anything in this video helpful, we would really appreciate you click on that like button. If you want to get a solid foundation on Power Apps, there are 10 things you must know. Lucky for you, my husband wrote the book. We are actually offering it for free. Click on the link below to download your free copy today. And if you want to connect with us or work with Darren directly, visit our website. The link is below. Thanks.